Morning Show, where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Ali Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Today, we're going to talk about Insecure star Issa Rae's new Hollywood gig, actor Channing Tatum and singer Jesse J's dating buzz, and Virgin Atlantic's historic celebration in the air. Plus, Discovery's Gold Rush stars Rick Ness, Parker Schnabel, and Tony Bates join the table. But first. Guys, we've got a good show. Yeah. Rapper Kanye West <laughs> met with Donald Trump yesterday at the White House. This is the second meeting for the two who were first photographed together back in August at Trump Towers. Recently, the duo has taken to social media to express admiration for one another. In April, Kanye tweeted, the mob can't make me not love him. We are both dragon energy. He is my brother. In response, Trump said, thank you, Kanye. Very cool. Let's take a look at a clip from yesterday's White House meeting. If he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories, and we have to make our core be in power. We have to bring jobs into America because our best export is entertainment and ideas, but when we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. Kanye, your clothing is manufactured in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's how you should. What is he talking about? He... He made no sense, and honestly, I mean, on a, com a comical level, like I imagine Kris Jenner sitting in her Calabasas home being like, oh, imagine my White House remodel when I'm president. But on a serious level, I think that's one of the most disrespectful things to happen in the Oval Office, and I'm including Bill Clinton's blowjob in there. Um, I honestly felt I was so flabbergasted by that meeting and that circus of an event in the Oval Office, and I found actually Kanye West's... Um, comments about how he, he goes, I like Hillary, I like everyone, but I'm with her, didn't stick with me because uh, my dad wasn't around and I need that. He literally was talking about appealing to Trump's toxic masculinity, which I felt honestly, I'm not even gonna talk about tr Kanye's crazy, I'm not gonna dive into that. I'm gonna talk about that Kanye West was incredibly misogynistic in what mm -hmm. he said to, Donald, to the President of the United yes. States in front of all these people. Talk about Hillary Clinton, whatever, I just found it I was, I honestly was trying to make jokes on Twitter, but I was having such a hard time because like, yeah. it was so, like, honestly, I, I like, does the, will the Night King take over? Like, the White Walkers <laughs> will be better than this because it, it was such, it was beyond Twilight Zone yeah. for me. It was crazy. I agree. I stand the White Walkers so much harder than I would yeah. ever stand any of these flops. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just so disgusting to say that, oh, this hat makes me feel like Superman. It's like, th this is all about a fucking hat the to hat, you. The hat. And I'm just like so over people being like, I need male energy. Just so you know, like men aren't inherently masculine right. and women aren't inherently feminine. We all have feminine and masculine energy. And it, I'm sorry that we all had to lose this election because Kanye couldn't find masculinity within himself. Right. Like, what are you talking about? I just want Thank him you. to just, Go away. Like, I, where can we hide I, him? I think I'm sorry. Like, no, I'm really under not. a stack of napkins yeah. or something. Like, can we hide him? I, know, I just feel like this was like Taylor Swift was having a moment when she came out as political, and this is just Kanye interrupting her once again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I refuse to talk about this. I'm really embarrassed for our country, to be honest. I want to point out that yesterday, Michelle Obama started her Global Girls Alliance for Education for Girls Around the World. That trailer? Uh, well, hold on, really quick. So Rory Kennedy is releasing a documentary on Saturday on Discovery Channel, Channel about climate change and how it's an emergency. There is voter suppression going on in Georgia, and 11 people died in Hurricane Michael. These are the things we should yeah, be focusing 100%. on, people. I'm just yeah. saying. Woo! And guys, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening in Georgia is actually crazy. Stacey Abrams is running against this guy named Brian Kemp, who's right now the, the Attorney General of Georgia, and he is basically systematically suppressing the vote of people yeah. of color because he knows if people of color vote, they'll most likely vote for Stacey Abrams, who's who could possibly the first Black woman governor of, of any state in the United States. So it is insane. Absolutely, what you just yeah. said. That list of things is what we should be talking about. Yeah. Totally. 100%. Love 100. it. That's all I have to add. Yeah. I also just want to talk about real quick the Lana Del Rey and Azalea Banks drama, which yes. I thought was hilarious. So Azalea Banks came at Lana Del Rey for calling out Kanye for being so problematic. And then basically Lana Del Rey was like, roll up, you know my address, but if I was you, I wouldn't because I won't not fuck you up. Right. Then Azalea Banks went wild and she was like, you know, everybody was like, you should just sell your soaps. 
Yeah. That's what she was doing. <laughs> she sells soap. She sells soap. Really? I think that's all she does now. I don't even know if she's releasing new music, but she's definitely selling soaps. And she was like, thanks, Andre, for all the free promo on my soap. <laughs> and we were like, okay. I really like this battle, though, because it's two witches fighting. Yeah. They're both actual <laughs> witches. Yeah. They are actual witches. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well documented. A and Absolutely. I, I yeah. loved Elizabeth Banks responded on Twitter because uh, Landa was really like, Banks, you could have been the greatest rapper of all time, but you failed. What Bank Elizabeth Banks responded being like, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I failed you, I failed myself, I could have been great. Clearly she's not the Banks we're talking about, no. but it was really funny to see like people chiming in. Elizabeth yeah, Banks, Banks is sitting there writing like Pitch Perfect, Perfect Five. Yes, exactly. Like, what am I in a rap battle? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then a, a fan wrote that Iggy Azalea was gonna jump in and give Lana Del Rey a gun, cause she always has a gun ready to go. And then Iggy responded with a photo of her holding a gun saying, actually, that's right. Oh. So, <laughs> oh this my simulation, God is going great. Yeah. It's glitching just as we planned. Yeah, that is just, that is It is hysterical. phenomenal. It is phenomenal. I, Azalea Banks, though, has not had music forever. All she does is fight people. Right. Yeah. That's, that's like a, her whole thing. She's just like racist, problematic, and says the <laughs> worst things ever. The only good thing she's done ever, I think, now is just taking out Elon Musk. But other yeah. than that, I'm like, okay, sit down and be happy. And that's an incredible story. She literally went to his house, right? Yeah. And was trapped in there or something with his wife. It was <laughs> a very <laughs> weird story. I think she went there to collab with Grimes, yeah. and then Grimes like just yes. like did not show up, and then she was stuck in Elon Musk's house, <laughs> witnessing him have like psychotic breakdowns, <laughs> and she just released all those details to the press. What I think that's hell? what happened. That's a public service right there. Probably yeah. the best. It's the best thing she's done in a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really. Anyway, anyway um, Easter Rae is on the move to find love. The Insecure star is all set to star in American Princess, a romantic comedy that will see Rae as an American woman who moves to London and is thrusted into the British high society. The flick will be directed by Everything Everything Stil uh, Stella McGee and produced by Simple Favors Paul Feig. I'm really excited. I love Issa Rae. I know. I'm so excited she's doing films. It's I a, love she, rich people. Yeah, she's playing like a Meghan Markle. Like, is that what it is? It's like an American girl goes to London and becomes a princess. Yeah. But I feel like she's so, like, Issa is so good at when she's like, um, I love on Insecure when she is awkward. Clearly, yeah. it's mentioned an awkward black girl, her YouTube series which got her to Insecure. But when she's like awkward or kind of like the underdog and like <laughs> people, like, well, she's driving Lyft or whatever. So I'm really excited to hear her go, go to London with British people and just see <laughs> Issa Rae in London trying to be like, you know, clap. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. She is by far my favorite person in Hollywood right now. Almost everything she does, like, I'm going to watch or read or support. Like, for me, she is, like, the future of black Hollywood. And so I love to see her branching out into movies. Uh, she's also in that The Hate You Give, which is out right yeah. now, which is a very heavy, serious, which she hasn't really done dramatic stuff. So I'm just here for anything she does. So I'll go see this movie, even though the premise to me doesn't sound like that. Fascinating but I that. love watching people just get swept up in high society. Like, Crazy Rich <laughs> Asians was so good just because you watch how these people live and you're just like, I'm jealous. <laughs> but it's like jealousy that's like feels comforting, like yeah. a blanket. Yeah. I was like, I'm so poor. A yeah. good, it's a good jealousy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I love that. Yeah, and I, I just think he says, like, what you said, it's such a, her story, and she talked about this in an interview, like, there was no blueprint. And no. I, I really like how she went from YouTube to HBO, but and being a black woman too, just really kind of paving away in a whole new, Hollywood is so surprisingly systematic and you climb these ladders to the next step and you have to do this, do that. And Issa Rae is one of those people that just like, you know what, I'm gonna do my thing mm -hmm. and I'm gonna succeed doing my thing. I, so I just love seeing her continue to succeed and take over Hollywood in her way. Yeah, She is doing her thing too. I remember at first when she first got her first t TV deal, it was with Shonda Rhimes. Mm. And it was gonna be more of a network thing. And that actually she backed away from that because she wanted to be able to say certain words and to cuss and to have certain topics covered. And so she almost like waited for the right opportunity or just, you know, she stayed right. true to herself and then look at how successful she's been on HBO. And I think that says something to a lot of artists coming up right now is that you don't have to wait for them to write the role for you. You can write your own and she's the perfect example of totally. that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like High Maintenance, too, was another one I yeah. love that, that HBO did. And then Broad City, of course. So the, yeah. those are two, other two series I feel like both were digital and they went to the more traditional way, but still doing their own thing, which mm -hmm. I really admire right now. Yeah, which is so hard. Well, didn't Bo Burnham start on YouTube? Did he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. He was yeah. like a crazy good YouTuber. And yeah. now he did eighth grade, now he's everywhere. I no? Yeah. No, no, they said, totally. yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. I, I know, I just, I was, I'm oh. saying no, like, no one cares. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I care. Yeah, you, I care. Shannon, you did YouTube, which I found so interesting, too, because you actually know, like, what it's like to, like, make a digital series and build yeah. subscribers and stuff. Like, do you feel that, like, it's a new way into, like, you know, producing television, like, you, you know? 
Maybe. I feel like like five years ago, that's what we were all hearing as YouTubers are like, oh, this is the new way to TV. And now um, there have been like, you know, this is a success story. There have been a lot of people who didn't have a success totally story. Right. So I've actually heard from insiders that they're pulling away from mm -hmm. internet personalities because of that. I don't know. I think it's a mixed bag. And I think the, the go-to answer, I'd say, is just like do what works for you. Right, right. And YouTube really works for people who are all about like creating themselves. Like if you're a writer who loves to edit, who has friends who shoots, like if you can do all those things and you can keep to a schedule on your own, definitely be making your own content. Right. I think it's hard to get that audience sometimes to transfer over to traditional TV. Totally. Yeah. So I think, like you're saying, you might be more successful just staying and living on YouTube because that's where your base right, is. Right, right. That's where your yeah. fans are. Did you guys see that show, Haters Back Off, on Netflix? Mm, it was based it. off of Miranda Singh, yes, a YouTube right. character. Yes. I think that that is like such a good show. And uh -huh. that character on YouTube is actually like so annoying, and I didn't like her hmm. on YouTube, but I love She's that show on Netflix. One. Yeah. She's like the whole, She's like, Whoa. That's so yeah. interesting. I know from YouTube, my younger yeah. brother loved her, like made my mom love her, but I did not watch Netflix because like she, the character's a super hyper character, so mm -hmm. I didn't watch Netflix, but it's something that you like the show better. Yeah, the show, I think it's like one of the few examples of a YouTuber like doing something different that actually worked out. Cause I have uh -huh. seen, and this is not counting uh, Issa Rae, I think she obviously is like the number one but, YouTuber, mm -hmm. but I feel like I wish Haters, uh, Haters Back Off hadn't been canceled that mm -hmm. season two because it also ends on like the best cliffhanger. Oh really? Oh, no. oh yeah. I hate when that happens. Can they finish it on YouTube? Well, you think they can go back and just like pick up because uh, now YouTube is doing series. And yeah. that's, true. that's true. And even uh, sometimes if enough fans like petition, totally. that they'll let them like, they'll like, well, all right, we'll give you one last episode. They did that with Sensei. Yeah. That's not a YouTube show. Yeah. yeah. They gave us a, the movie, right? I think we're getting a movie for it. For well, what? Sensei. Oh, they, they gave like a two hour long finale. Yeah. 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 Veronica Mars, right? That was something that they did the movie. That was something. They, 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 <laughs> that was something. That was something. But that they fans fun, yeah. funded that That's movie. That's kind of the energy of that morning, of this morning. That was something. That was something. Yeah. Uh, new couple alert. According to US Weekly, Channing Tatum and Jesse J have been reportedly dating for a few months now. Channing is recently divorced from wife Jenna Duan and has been seen jamming out at Jesse's concerts. Tatum starred in the film, the animated film Smallfoot, which premiered in September. He definitely has a type. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, she looks like Jenna Dewan Tatum. She totally does. Yeah. She, she does. She like, does. they have very similar looks. He likes brunettes. He likes brunettes. They're like kind of fit and with bobs. Wear dark eyes. With bobs. <laughs> yeah. Loves with brunette bobs. with a good bob. Yeah. What <laughs> if he's just into bobs? Like, it's just like, ooh, give me that tight haircut right here. 100% all about the bobs. Yeah. So many people think Channing Tatum is the hottest thing ever, and he never struck me as like the hot, like just yeah. the hottest of the hot. Did like, you see I, he kind of looks up? like a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, you know, he does look like a hot dog. He's very pink and juicy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, that's so funny. No, There's literally. A, no, I agree. There's yeah. also another guy on this Netflix original show that I forget the name, but he also looks like a cooked hot dog. It's insane. It's a type of man that looks like a hot it dog. Is. It's not a bad thing. No, it's not at all. It's, it's just like he's a, a Nathan's original. Yeah, yeah, I love him. It's a hot dog I would eat. Yeah, throw some oh. ketchup on that. Oh. Hey. Oh, come on. That's so funny. I've never I think he's hot. You listen to all the old men Britney said she would eat on this show? <laughs> yeah. Tom Who's Cruise. The, really? Tom Cruise was oh, the only Alex one. Trebek, no, was Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. Oh. I did not say Alex Trebek could get it. I said that. I okay, but if, like Alex Trebek. If he snack. swiped, if he swiped right on Tinder and you guys matched, you would definitely pursue it. You, yeah. Of Alex Trebek. Brittany is like, what is a snack? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't kick him out of bed, yeah. but I'm not gonna pursue him. I'm joking. I'm not <laughs> he, no, I think Shannon Tatum is beautiful. Did you see Magic Mike 1? Yeah. Woo! And Magic Mike 2? <laughs> but you know, it's so hard. Joe Manganiello like, really he's just the seals oh, the he, fucking show. That man, uh, is he? Oh, no, he's, he's not, not in that photo. Oh, yeah. That man is so perfect. He is. So he is. Perfect. He is it's so funny, perfect him man. and Sofia Vergara are such a gorgeous couple because yeah. she is the embodiment of everything you think in, as femininity. She's a and, cartoon, like, yeah. And everything, and he's just the embodiment of like, masculinity and you know what he looks sexy in an I'm with her hat so what the fuck I know yeah. that literally Beautiful. could not have been summed up better of that relationship <laughs> it's 100% accurate right it's that is them and that's why everyone loves them so much they're so sexy yeah, yeah. but to give so this goofy. I really like Jesse J yeah. she's so talented she's so real yeah. too. incredible songwriter and singer that we actually had Lewis York on the show and they actually helped write Domino I know yes what? 
call. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. No, so I'm I'm all whatever good news about Jesse J. I'm like, this is cool. Whatever. I think I mean obviously they split up I think in April. It's been a couple months. They both seemed very positive yeah. about the split up and they share they're sharing custody of their daughter. They've clearly both moved on. They have all these different projects going on. So it's like, yeah, why can't they be I don't think yeah. there's any time frame on like how yeah. fast it's totally. Too soon, you know? I loved in the statement the that they released yeah. about their breakup, they were like, nothing has changed. I was like, except for the fact that you guys don't want to be together. <laughs> yeah. But okay. It's such a, it's, it's actually, you don't love each other. It's <laughs> such an interesting thing. Like, we love each other. We're best friends, but we're no longer together. And it's like, it's one thing, like, it's so cool. That's the like, way it should be. Like, why do you have to be, you know, like, yeah. people can break up and still love each other. But it's also so interesting because, like, nothing has changed. But something has changed. You no longer are married. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. It is. Happy for everyone everyone involved, but I just was very interested by that statement. Yeah, yeah. nothing has changed, but they don't want to fuck no more. Yeah. I think Except what's that's what changed it is, right? is her career. I think she's more focused on her, and she's done being her, his kind of like second. There you oh, go. Yeah. That's how you feel? I do, because in Step Up, after Step Up, he blew up and yeah. had all this going on, and she just very recently has sort of like hit her stride with her dance shows, and she's doing more choreography, and I think it's different when she wanted to focus on herself, and maybe that was maybe. contentious. They were also married for nine years. Yeah. Right. That's like a whole ass relationship. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, in that's Hollywood, that's hundred that, years. More than that, it's like, yeah, wrap it up. Right. Yeah. That's a legit thing. Yeah, and, and like, remember his meteoric rise, like six years ago, was like swift and fast. Yeah. He did all these movies um, with Jonah Hill and whatever, and so like, I totally get it that now she's like, hey, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. He's so funny in Twenty One Jump Street yes. when he's like gross on the floor, like, Ugh, oh, oh gagged yeah. up, just like, what is he like a nasty little <laughs> slut cannibal or something? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what is that? No, Legit. Oh yeah, that's yeah. what I want to be. I want to be a nasty little slut cannibal. Well, Halloween's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Um, <laughs> Costume. On a bit of a more serious note, this really does remind me of the conversation we had on here a bit ago, where I think we all agree that like even though they don't, they're not staying together, it doesn't mean the relationship totally. is a failure. Like totally. I really feel yeah. like this was a good chapter in their. I mean, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah. They no. both seemed happy and in love. They had a baby. They had a nice life, and then they were like, "We're good." Yeah. We're good. Peace. I have no opinions on that. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, things change. The only thing that's constant is change. So yeah, they get yeah. it. Woo! Woo! In other news, Virgin Atlantic wants you to fly in style. The British airline will launch UK's first ever Pride flight from London to New York City in June 2019 to celebrate World Pride. Hosted by actor Titus Burgess from Netflix Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, the flight will feature on board entertainment including a DJ, drag queen bingo, Judy Garland sing-alongs, <laughs> inter-seat speed dating, and many fabulous performances. Let's take a look. Calling all queens to board the Virgin Pride flight. You don't want to miss his flight. Come get fabulous at 30,000 feet. That looks fun. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> as a member of the LGBT community, I can say for a fact that this flight is too long. I would do New York, New York to Detroit, not New York to London. These people will exhaust you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, exactly. It's gonna be one of those things you like, you from the start, high energy, it's going crazy, drag me, bingo, oh my god, An hour, hour three. An hour is enough. Yeah. Okay, I'm a Jew and I'm on this spectrum. Also, this is a moving target. I would not get on this plane. Right. Could you imagine if someone said, this plane is only gonna have black Jews? <laughs> Book a different flight. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. Yeah. I, that is, wow, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I was too busy thinking about the so awkwardness funny. of going on a speed date with someone and then it going bad and not being able to get away from them. Being stuck That's in a seat next to them. Yeah, yeah this isn't like, working. Where are you seating? seating? It's exactly like, oh, it's like, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. And like, oh, do you want to get up? I'm going to get up. Okay, you're going to get up. Okay, you're going to get up. Like, I just think that, that, that's the, the conversation you're going to have to have. You have someone that you don't like on a speed date. Oh, I'm man. like opposite than you. I think five hours is a perfect amount of time for an event like this. I need five hours to fully lean in, to dance, to date. <laughs> I really want to immerse myself in the experience. I think it'll be great. I, I just mean, wonder if there'll be any time for like, uh, you know, like a respite period. <laughs> yeah. Everyone sleep. 20 minutes. Yeah. Like 20 minutes. They play some cool ballads, Judy yeah. Garland ballads, and everyone just goes to sleep for a I little bit. I think this bit. sounds like a party. I would go and it's 
second. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mark Anderson, the executive vice president of Virgin Atlantic, spoke about the experience, saying, "This is going to be a show-stopping, groundbreaking, one-of-a-kind experience that we can't wait to bring to you the skies next June." <laughs> I, I mean, they're really going all in, even when yeah. they were like boarding all queens. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, I wonder if the captain's gonna be like, "We're twenty thousand feet above the ground, and that's high as a motherfucking kite." Like, <laughs> are they just gonna like infuse that lingo and like totally. every single aspect of the flight? I think if he channels his character on the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, yeah. Titus Andromedon, then it is going to be extra like that. Like oh everything he says is like the best punchline. Totally. So, yeah. but I hope the pilots are like really normal pilots who are just like, uh, okay, uh, I guess next we have a Madonna dance off. Uh, okay, uh, let's play like a virgin. Uh, they just like, don't know what's funny. going on. Um, yeah, no, I love Titus so much. So I would go just to watch him yeah, just like perform. Exactly. I've actually noticed that on planes, like whenever the, uh, as a stand up, I'm sure you've noticed this too, that whenever the stewardess is, uh, is make jokes, they always kill. Yeah. Because people are so afraid that they're going to die that they're yeah. willing to laugh at anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm always like, oh, if I did stand up on a plane, I would murder. You know what I mean? <laughs> people are so afraid they just want to laugh at anything. And they make the dumbest jokes. So I'm sure all of these acts will just like destroy. That is yeah. so That's funny and true. true. Yeah. I think a good prank would uh, is to buy a homophobe a ticket on this flight and be like, I got you a trip to London and just like send them out there and be like, ha 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 ha. You know, we all know one fucking homophobe. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I, so I want to get back more to like, fun. I'm actually concerned now. I did not think about it. Like literally like, let's collect the, like the, the most fabulous gay people in the world, <laughs> put them on a moving object in the, over the ocean, and then, like, literally, I'm a little bit scared now. Allie kind of scared yeah. me a little bit. I did not think about that. But potentially someone could target this plane. So no. we're, we're praying for everyone involved. There's but. just like a force field of love around it. I'm not totally. worried about it. It's gonna be safe. Oh, that's so good. powerful. Yeah. The love would just block anything that yeah, comes up. I love that. Well, <laughs> and now it's time to move on to our guests. Rick Ness, Ness Parker Schnabel, and Tony Beats are the stars of Discovery's number one show, Gold Rush, which is back for season nine. This season will be unlike any other, featuring new miners and rivalries as the crews mine for gold. Let's take a look at a clip. I've been working for Parker for six years, but I'm done working for somebody else. I want to work for myself. Fire it up! And... This is my chance. I've got everything on the line, my house, every penny I have. I've got my friends with me, their livelihoods. I'll take care of you, Dad. No worries, buddy. It doesn't get any bigger than this. This season, I've got everything I own on the line. I've spent millions of dollars buying my own ground and I could lose it all this year. We've lost Rick Ness as foreman, and he does leave a big hole to fill. I need somebody to replace Rick. But I'm holding off on my new ground, because Tony's ground, the last cut, is the best ground that we've ever mined. My master plan is coming together. This year, pull it tight! I'm gonna double up on the dredges. I'm gonna double up on the boats. And I wanna get twice as much gold as I got last year. You know what? My kids will be mining in the Klondike long after I'm gone. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to Gold Rush stars Rick Parker, Rick Parker, and Tony. You guys, I can't believe this show has been on for nine seasons. I got to check out the most recent episode, and I get it, though. I mean, what you guys do is one so difficult and so hard, but then what you guys can earn is so impressive. So what do, what do you think keeps bringing viewers back season after season? Um, I mean, it's a very intense business uh, that's, you know, you have a very short amount of time. Like, we have four months to basically make, you know, all the money that we can in a, in a season, and... Um, and so it's a very intense business that there's not a lot of room for error and, and, um, and you never know what you're gonna get, yeah. right? It's like going to Vegas. <laughs> How competitive is it out there? I mean, it's fair, it's kind I just, of I compete against myself. I <laughs> yeah, not all that yeah. competitive. No? I mean, it no, is yeah. and it isn't. I mean, the more you do, the more bigger your bills are gonna be. So but. like Parker said, there was nothing in the ground, you're not gonna get it. Right. But your, your odds are like, your odds ain't not that pretty good. 
No. Most of the time, no. Do you feel like since you guys started the show, more people have been like actually interested in doing what you're doing? Yeah, there's been we a lot of people showing up. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Just showing up out of the The blue. three of us have probably contributed to a few bankruptcies. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is Discovery's uh, number one rated show, and that's huge. So, like, how does that feel for you guys? Do you guys have fans following you around? Do they have, like, a name for their fandom? Do they call you, like, the Gold Daddies? <laughs> gold Daddies. <laughs> that's the Gold Daddies, right? right? From now on, yeah, I okay. the only answer to <laughs> Gold Daddies. Gold Daddy, right? <laughs> Yeah, any cool fan stories? Do people follow you around? Or are they like checking your pockets for gold? Come on, give me the juicy stories. You guys dig you, for gold. Do you guys want to talk to us? Yeah. <laughs> You're like this poor bitch. We spent, we spent six months up there digging in the dirt and we don't get out much. Yeah, uh, we, we all just got out of like just got out six, seven months in the woods. Oh. So we're, we're uh, not like, New York you know. was a bad choice <laughs> yeah. to bring us okay, right okay. out of the woods. Well, just bad. so you know, you guys are on TV and people really like you. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, you what guys are, are number one rated show on Discovery. That's uh, not nothing. That's not nothing. Yeah. I want to ask each each of you guys a question. Rick, so this season begins, you are essentially like, you've recruited your, your best friends in Wisconsin, and you guys are all giving up so much. I mean, the stakes literally could not be higher. Yeah. I think your dad even says that you're going to come home friendless and without any money. <laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Great, great dad support. So, yeah. like, what was that like, not only taking the risk, but convincing your friend to take that risk as well? Oh, it was, it was big this year, no doubt. And uh, um, at the end of the day, I, I, I could have uh, built a crew of people that knew what they were doing. Probably would have been a smart decision on my, my, my half, but um, I wanted to, uh, I, I didn't want to share that with strangers. I wanted to bring my friends with me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, you know, is, uh, was it the right decision? We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. That's so exciting. And then, and Parker, <laughs> when I, when you, Funny, we're sitting you guys next to each other because the season begins. You, uh, you guys have a, uh, an intense conversation that Stop even it. I was getting. Like, oh my god, this is a this is yeah, a very uncom very uncomfortable right? fight. He's a very uncomfortable person. I don't like being in the middle of this. Fucking what was bed. that like? Yeah, I was really actually concerned you guys sat. <laughs> yes, <together>. confronting <laughs> him basically about I uh, mean, explaining like royalties and what was that like? Basically, the person you're very close to, kind of you know confronting them right off in the, the beginning of the season. Uh, yeah, I mean. We've had that argument quite a bit, and you know, Tony's royalty structure still makes absolutely zero sense <laughs> to me. Of course, fine for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the problem. That's I the way that, that those conversations Mr. always Wonderful. go. <laughs> yeah, he it. is the Mr. Wonderful of gold mining. See no problem with that at all whatsoever. See. We've been talking about that for the last couple of days. He doesn't care about anything. Yeah. He's the Tony, gold daddy. Tony does not care about He's anything. He's the Tony gold daddy beat. <laughs> Tony the gold daddy. Oh, he is the gold daddy. Tony gold daddy. Yeah, even his neighbor is gold. And Tony, you have this master plan to get the two ancient dredges together and turn around some profits. So what's happened ancient. like this, this, this season? Well, I don't know about a master plan. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I think those things will shine. If you got ground that's not the greatest, mm -hmm. then let them go. Mm -hmm. They cost very little to operate. We have plenty of property there that conventionally to mine the way we do with equipment. I don't think you're going to make a buck. And those things that cost so little, so just let them go. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's and also. They'll, they'll make us some money. So, yeah. yeah. It's so fascinating to me because I, I literally know nothing about it watching the show. It's like, this is so incredible. I didn't know this was still like happening, yeah. and you guys work so hard. I have a question. What's the most you've gotten from one pool? How much gold, like dollar value from like one day? From one day? Yeah. Oh, God. Hmm, that's been a while. I mean, on the hill, you guys used to... Yeah, but, I mean, that's 30 years ago. <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the hill, we used to do 100, 125 ounces every day. Yeah. And for a, a plaster miner, that's pretty good. I so mean, in, in dollars, how In the real world, it ain't much. Like 100 grand. A day. 100 grand a day, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. But yeah. back then, it wouldn't have been 100 grand. No, no, no. 300 bucks an ounce. Oh, okay. so. We had a couple of like hundred ounce days this year. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, like I said, I got to check out the show, and I couldn't wait to see how much gold you got. So I totally understand why you guys are back for the ninth season. I'm really pumped you guys have you here. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. And everyone, make sure to check out the season nine premiere of Gold Rush tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on Discovery. We'll see you guys on Monday, same time, same table. Woo! Woo!